Okay, so we'll begin. Uh, welcome to this morning's pyjama meditation. And today we're going to do um, uh, a meditation called uh, Loving Kindness Meditation, which uh, quite a few of you will be familiar with now. And normally uh, this is done for um, ourselves, a good friend, uh, a stranger, and someone we have difficulty with. Um, and we'll be doing it that um, as, as that on Friday. But today we're just going to concentrate a bit more on ourselves and do the four stages for ourselves. Um, because it's really important that we are kind to ourselves. If we're not kind to ourselves, it's virtually impossible for us to be kind to other people, or at least extremely difficult. Um, to be really kind, um, kind from the heart. We need to begin with a sense of real love in ourselves. Uh, and it's that love that expands out towards other people. Uh, metta isn't just um, uh, being kind or loving somebody in order that they love us back or in order that we get something back. It's not a transaction. Metta is about just being kind and loving uh, and supportive and accepting regardless of what happens afterwards. It's just a way of being. And it's radical because if we can be like that, then what happens is that the world starts to be, behave similarly back to us or at least less hostile. Um, so it's a, it's a wonderful meditation um, and uh, it works very well if we keep doing it. We really have to work at it um, uh, continually. Uh, and if we can do that, if we can meditate um, and do this meditation a few times each week, practice this, um, this loving kindness while we're out in the world as well, then we transform ourselves and the world around us transforms. So it's a, it's a fantastic practice. Okay, so I've said enough, let's get on with some meditation. Um, and I'm gonna start after we've settled in by reading a poem, which I think is uh, very apposite. Um, uh, about, it's a poem about ourselves, it's called Remembering. Um, and it's trying to get a bit closer to the reality of who we are rather than who we think we are. Um, okay. So, we'll begin in the usual way by just settling in to our posture. And as always, some of you might be lying on the bed, lying on the floor. You might be lying in the bed. That's okay too. Uh, you might be sitting on the chair or on the cushion on the floor. So whatever mode of uh, meditation you're choosing to meditate, then that's fine. Uh, so just taking stock of how you are this morning, this bright sunny morning in May, at 8.05, how are you right now? And it's okay if you're not feeling so good. It's absolutely okay, however you're feeling. We need to be honest with ourselves and accepting of ourselves in all our different moods and shades. If we're feeling really resentful, then we need to be kind to ourselves in that. If we're feeling angry, if we're feeling depressed, we need to have a sense of deep kindness. If we're feeling happy and joyful, then we need to be happy with ourselves for feeling that way. Sometimes we can feel guilty for feeling happy and well. 
doesn't matter how we are it's it's good it's okay it's the truth of the moment and we can be kind to it however much we might it like it not to be like that but just noticing the weight of the body on the bed or floor or chair or cushion and just allowing whatever you're sitting on to take your weight just giving up your weight letting gravity hold you and just really coming into a sense of self trying to drop away from the mind into the body and beginning to notice the breath in the chest chest moving all the time growing and getting smaller expanding and contracting noticing that on each each out breath the shoulders drop and as they drop allowing any tension tightness to drop away down through the body into the floor so on each out breath as the shoulders drop just relaxing and then relaxing a little bit more on the next one and a little bit more I'm going to read a poem about just being still, just being the whole of your experience. It's called Remembering and it's by Julia Ferenbacher. There is nothing you need to do, you know. No amount of hiding or seeking or telling or trying to erase the ache, the weight, the trembling, strangling, middle of the moment grip that threatens to feast on your core. You need only return to the part that breathes and beats and hears and sees all on its very own. To their part that hums and sways and dreams lullabies of peace. Come, it says, lean the weight of you against me. Sit and stay until you remember that you are tangled and woven in stardust, in roots and rivers, in suns and moons, in every breath that has ever breathed. Until you remember that you are me and I am you, that together we are everything. So this is the Metta Bhavana Loving Kindness Meditation. And begin by bringing our awareness to our chest area. 
rising and falling. As we breathe in and breathe out. The lungs expanding and contracting. The rib cage expanding with each in breath and contracting as we breathe out. And if you can bring your attention down to the bottom of your rib cage, right in the middle is a place called the sternum. And you may, if you want to just touch this area just to really uh, find out where it is if you can't do it imaginatively. So right at the bottom of the ribs in the middle is the sternum and behind this is the chitta, what we call the chitta, the heart center, the source of all our loving kindness. And as you breathe in, you might feel a very pleasant feeling if you focus, if you relax enough. And that's loving kindness. If you can't feel that, that's okay. Just bring to mind somebody that you really, really love. A person or a pet or an animal that you see occasionally, that you have a real heart connection with. And just notice when you bring this being to mind, if anything happens in the heart area, in the heart center. If nothing happens, then that's okay. Just staying aware, being open to the fact that it might happen. <clears throat> Just welcoming in some kind of loving feeling in the heart center as much as you can. Don't worry if you can't. And if you can feel a warm feeling in the heart center, however small, just staying with it not trying to make it anything else and allowing it to expand and grow so that it fills the whole of your being. And if this is difficult, then just keeping a sense of kindness to yourself. It may take a time to be able to do this. Just keeping your awareness on this center of the bottom of the rib cage behind the sternum and relaxing. Just relaxing mentally, physically, allowing any thoughts to drop away, not getting caught up with any thoughts if you can avoid it.
I'm just going to look at how we are as human beings. As I've said before, we're a little bit like a precious jewel. Each of us is very precious. Our lives are very precious. We've been born as human beings. We could have been born as anything in a way, but we're not, we're here. We're human beings, we can think, we can remember, we can plan. We are these amazing beings. And each of us is amazing. We're like precious jewels, precious, beautiful jewels. And jewels are precious when they come out of the ground, but they only become truly, truly beautiful in every way when they are polished, when all the facets are polished off. So we are like this jewel with many, many facets, a multifaceted person. All sorts of sides of us competing against each other. All these changes in ourselves. Some facets that are beautifully polished, shiny. The bits we like about ourselves. Other bits are a bit unpolished, a bit rough, and some facets are completely obscure, we don't really want to notice them at all. So can we be kind to all these different parts of ourselves? The bits that are difficult for us, the bits that are comfortable. The strong bits, the vulnerable bits. The happy bits. The irritable and angry bits. the sad parts of ourselves and the joyful parts. The fun parts and the self-critical parts. The bits that celebrate and get excited and the bits that grieve. All these are part of ourselves. They're all important parts of ourselves. Can we be friends with them? Can we be friends with them all? Help them to become more polished. Help the good bits to be even better and the difficult bits to become good bits. <clears throat> Can we have a sense of kindness and love to every little part of ourselves, whether pleasant or unpleasant, comfortable or uncomfortable?
And can we see ourselves as our own best friend? If we imagine our best friend, someone that really cares for us, if we get upset or feel bad in any way, that friend might come and support us, help us feel better, just stay with us and be kind to us. Can we be that friend to ourselves? Can we always be there for ourselves? Always supportive, no matter what. Helping ourselves in the difficult times. Enjoying ourselves in the best of times. Just like any good friend. Can we have this sense of friendship towards ourselves? Towards this fragile human being that's just doing its best to make a path through life. And sometimes struggling. So can we also be a parent to ourselves, be a kind, loving parent to our inner child? The inner child that we all have. The inner child in ourselves that's always trying to stay safe that worries a lot. That feels vulnerable. This little part of ourselves that is unsure, not very confident the small child. And can we give this part of ourselves care and attention, just as we would to any small child? Can we hold it in our arms imaginatively? And give it reassurance, tell it that everything's all right, that it doesn't need to worry or feel vulnerable or bad? Can we look after this small child in ourselves just as we would look after any small child that was in distress? And can we bring to mind now our critical self? The self that always sits on our shoulder, criticizing what we do. 
criticising other people. And this critical self is only trying to keep us safe. But it's a bit deluded. It's just a bit like the small child. It's worried and it's panicking about keeping us safe. Its intention is good. So can we have a sense of kindness and love to this critical self as well? When it appears, can we have a sense of love towards it, a sense of holding it, helping it to keep safe, helping it to feel that it doesn't need to do anything. And finally, can we bring our attention back to the whole of ourselves, this precious jewel of ourselves with its many facets. Some comfortable, some uncomfortable, some pleasant, some unpleasant some difficult and can we have a sense of love and kindness and acceptance to the whole of ourself with all our many qualities and behaviors and mental states and emotions can we see ourselves as somebody who is doing the best all the time that is really trying and can we be our own best friend supporting ourselves through the hard times being with us ourselves in the good times always there always helpful and loving and kind and friendly to ourselves. And to end with, I'm going to read Julia Ferrenbacher's poem again. <clears throat> there is nothing you need to do. You know no amount of hiding or seeking or telling or trying will erase the ache, the weight, the trembling, strangling, middle of the moment grip that threatens to feast on your care. You need only return to the part that breathes and beats and hears and sees all on its very own. To the part that hums and sways and dreams lullabies of peace. 
Come, it says, lean the weight of you against me. Sit and stay until you remember that you are tangled and woven in stardust, in roots and rivers, in suns and moons, in every breath that has ever breathed, until you remember that you are me and I am you, and that together we are everything. <laughs>